All right. Hello? It's really loud, isn't it? It's kind of weird hearing you here and over there. Yeah. The other person was, oh. Oops. Wait, what? Uh, he was saying you were quiet. Should I like move the mic or? Probably. Okay, let's see if I can like. Is this better? Is this better? All right. All right. Cool. I'll just try and talk kind of loud, I guess. So, um. Wasn't there going to be a third person? Bio Resident Evil Hazard 2. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Wasn't there supposed to be a third person? Uh, maybe. I think I asked Caleb, but I think he's like passed out. Where is Caleb? Huh? Yeah. That's good. Oh, okay. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Summer Games. So, wait, where's the uh, fourteen? Which one is this? Is that one? Where's the resident? That one? Okay. Two. Sub internet. Gonna run under the clear A option. Hope y'all are doing great this wonderful I'd midnight make back of oh. June the twenty-fourth. <laughs> As we prepare to enter our thirty-six continuous hour of streaming speed games thank you for watching so uh, we about ready to start should I speak up can I speak up Uh, hold on. All right, ready. You do the countdown. Oh, uh, three, two, one, go. Okay. Oh, to the right. Did we gonna make it? We made it. Okay, good. That's like a pretty hard dodge to get at the very beginning of the game. Uh, yeah, the first dodge it can uh, it can be affected by RNG a little bit. Sometimes the zombies will uh, shamble a little too quickly and will totally cut you off from making that dodge at all. Do you like give a brief summary if somebody somehow doesn't know Resident Evil? Oh. Hold on one sec. This is, uh... Did I get it? Oh, damn. Almost. I almost got no damage on the basketball court. Okay. So, brief summary. Uh, where do I begin? Well, Resident Evil game... Resident Evil games. Classic Resident Evil games. Uh... Static camera angles. Tank controls. Pretty frustrating for someone who is playing the game for the first time. Trying to play the game casually is really weird because of, like he said, tank controls, meaning you hold forward on the control stick, you move forward, back moves backwards, regardless of the angle you're facing. Yeah. Left and right turn you. You can't walk forward into the right. You can walk forward, turn right, then walk forward again, but yeah. controls are really awkward. That's uh, pretty much the size of it. Yeah, you can't move while shooting either, so it's all in place, aim up, aim down, but uh, there are some ways you can shave time with it. Here, for example, got off an accidental quick shot there, two, three. You'll notice that I am down. Um, that's actually a little bit quicker to, uh, to uh, ready yourself aiming down than it is to aim at shoulder level, because uh, aiming down, crap. I shouldn't talk while going through that area. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, in general, you should know that aiming down is a little bit quicker than aiming at horizontal level. Um, also, one other thing you can do with uh, the guns in this game, uh, you can cancel into quicker shots. You can cancel out the recovery animation. If you hit the aim button, that would be like R1 on the PlayStation controller at uh, just the right frame. And you'll cancel out into another shot a little bit quicker. We call it quick shotting. So uh, features specific to the GameCube version. The GameCube version is uh, pretty much a direct port of the PlayStation version of the game. You can uh, skip most cutscenes by hitting start. Uh, the game timer is a lot faster in real time than it is in game time. The, uh, whenever you skip cutscenes, they're added onto the final time. So the game counts cutscene skipping. It uh, <coughs> so it kind of makes it kind of makes timing a little bit annoying sometimes, but it does flow pretty well. The fact that the, the, doors. the game time itself is measured by frame rate ticks, so it makes it really really consistent. Eliminates things like load times and lag. Yeah. So coming up on the first looker here, um, I could I could skip this up and B, but generally I'm not supposed to skip that second cutscene where he's falling down. Like it wouldn't count against me in game time if I if I don't skip the cutscene, but if I do, it actually makes him a little bit harder to dodge. Like you could see, it uh, ate up a few extra frames where he just like started where he just like went leaping immediately. So it's a lot harder to dodge that way. Um, for this room over here. What you have to do is you just have to hold upright until you're 90 degrees from where you started, then just hold up until you get to the stairs, and then make a hard right. And you just completely go in between those zombies like nothing. Um, like I'm going to try to focus the commentary a little bit more on the movement of the game, I suppose. Uh, just where enemies are in relation to the camera, the tank controls, stuff like that is uh, very important to clearing each room without taking damage. One other thing to note, the more damage you take, the more likely a run is to fail very, very, very hard. Like, game over hard. One of the biggest components of Resident Evil speedrunning is just optimizing and not getting eaten by zombies, which is slow. Taking yeah. damage makes you walk slower and get grabbed more. Yeah, exactly. Um, both Claire and Leon start off with 200 health. Uh, zombie bites do 30 damage, so it'll take four bites from a zombie to put you into 80 damage and into caution. Uh, right now, I'm at uh, I'm at 140 health because I got bit by the zombie in the basketball court, and I got bit by another zombie in the city that I wasn't supposed to get bit by. That was dumb. <laughs> uh, so this puzzle here, you want to solve it just a little bit at a time. Like push one statue, go through the door, push this other statue, and then get the red jewel on the way back. I think, yeah, okay, that's good. It's very easy to push that statue one pixel too far, and then it'll eat up another five seconds, like correcting it so that you can actually get it on the plate. Um, this next zombie over here, you can hold R2, or R1, excuse me. I'm using a PlayStation controller adapter for the GameCube version. But uh, you can hold R1 for a second, and that'll put you at the correct trajectory to just go straight for the door. And there's zombie hands, the Stranger Danger hands. If you angle it, danger. Yeah. If you angle it, uh, if you angle it correctly, then you know you won't uh, you won't get grabbed by the Stranger Danger hands. You just have to go on the inside wall to avoid this looker here. Don't talk to strangers. Yeah. I need an adult for this run. So can we get a roll call right quick? Okay. Uh, roll call? Oh, yeah, I'll well, hi. I'm Carcinogen. I'm the runner. <coughs> I am Viva Gaming 360. I like Resident Evil. 
Are you doing like any of It's a little bit slow. So this is our first instance of unnecessary backtracking. Take the unicorn metal all the way back down to the fountain, grab the spade key. Um, we're not going to be using the item chest yet because it's a little bit quicker to wait until the second floor save room to deposit the handgun and knife. That'll be the only time in the run where we use the item box. I'm going to hug the wall a little bit and as soon as the camera angle changes, backwards. And so does the liquor. So I go through the door here. Um, I forgot what the roll call. This is Mopful, the alpaca. What's what's his name? Mopful. Mopful. Yes, it was written by Mayushi, who's Norwegian, so I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. But I don't know. It's Norwegian. It's probably spelled with like some silly O's with slashes through them. It it looks like normal English letters, but I'm not really sure. So oh. just taking a shot at it. Okay, so. For the safe strat, I want to grab the green herb here, so I rotate first instead of holding up and right to move. Generally, it's faster to hold up and right or up and left, you know, up and a direction to uh, move. But sometimes in order to get around enemies, you have to turn before moving. We don't have the lighter yet, so we can't go in there. There would be no point. And now that we have the spade key, we can go upstairs, unlock the next door, and we will grab the red jewel along the way. That zombie, same thing. Hold up and left until you hit 90 degrees, then just correct the angle straight and try to get to the stairs. So there's our red jewel. I kind of wish I was playing the PlayStation version so that I wouldn't be skipping all these cutscenes. These cutscenes are some pretty fun times. Voice acting has not uh, progressed in quality very much since it's the first really Resident Evil game. It's not really one of Resident Evil's strong points. Or it could be one of Resident Evil's strong points. Well, it depends how you look at it. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grab this red herb here. Because I'm going to want full health by the time I leave the police station. Hold up left. Hold up right. And uh, here's one of the spaces in the American version that differs from the Japanese version. There's uh, two zombies here. And they are completely RNG dependent whether you will pass them or not. So I'm going to decapitate them both. I love the grenade launcher because it takes off their heads and half their torsos. They uh, they were very very gratuitous with the uh, blood and gore in the classic Resident Evil games. They kind of they kind of started to chicken out around um, around zero and remake. For example, the rocket launcher and remake it just like it just like knocks zombies down. It doesn't like it doesn't like blow them up or anything. Um. So the crow hallway here. Uh, there's not really a lot of precise movement going on, but you kind of want to not get hung up on corners because there's a lot of these guys here. And getting pecked and stunlocked is no fun. Hold up right. Hold up right again. Hold up right again. And we'll go downstairs. This is another particularly difficult dodge. We call the female zombies Misties because they kind of look like Misty from Pokemon. And uh, Misties are also very, very, very vicious because they are always placed in they are always placed in very, very tight spots to dodge. So going back through here, dodge between this fence and this lamppost. Got to get there before that guy catches up. And now she's lodged on the stairs. I want her to kind of lunge around at me because that will make her eat up an action. And then I can go up the stairs if I do it right. 
And we can unequip the grenade launcher here and just like go back to a one-handed weapon. Um, running speed. So running speed is affected by which weapon you have equipped. Uh, one-handed weapons like the pistol or the knife do not affect your running speed. Uh, I believe it's 38 units that you can run with a one-handed weapon equipped, but it drops it down to, I think, 34 units with a grenade launcher. Um, you can run with a grenade launcher. It'll lead up maybe like, maybe like one frame for every room you enter, or like every room you clear with the grenade launcher equipped. But uh, it's not worth it to go into the menu to unequip it because it takes like three seconds to unequip it. So you only want to do it when you're going to use another item otherwise. So we only have the one red jewel here. We'll put that down and grab the diamond key. Now that we have the lighter, we'll go and get the other red jewel and uh, we'll go check on our good buddy Marvin. The cop at the beginning of the game is all like, sorry, Leon, but your party has been canceled. So here's the uh, only time we actually use the item box. You can scroll a lot quicker than just tapping up by hitting L2 or R2. So it's kind of like XL1X, XL1X, like twice. We have to go through the liquor hallway one more time. Back up to 200 health. So it'll be okay if I tank like maybe a couple of hits. In addition to into in addition to what weapon you have, your health also affects your running speed. Yes, exactly. Um, your health will drop to like if your health drops below 100, then you fall into caution, and uh, it'll drop. Hold on one sec. Slide, camera angle change, hit back. I messed it up. Um, right, so your health will drop about, your speed will drop about 10%, and your uh, your turn speed will drop about 15%, 20%, I think. So you turn and, so you turn and run a lot slower, and uh, it makes it a lot easier for, you know, the uh, bad zombie RNG to catch up to you. In particular, the uh, ones that shamble really quickly. Um, zombies all the zombies are all placed in the same position, uh, pretty much no matter what. But in Resident Evil 2, like their textures may be swapped a little bit. Um, the skeletons remain the same, as do their as do their animations. There's like there's like slightly different animations for each zombie, so you kind of have to dodge them a little bit differently. So here's another one. We want to lure this Misty forward over here. Turn right, go behind her, hit the door. This is another particularly hard dodge, which I may or may not make, depending on how fast these zombies shamble. One, two, go. I'm gonna reset, I'm gonna reset the room. Yeah, there's other zombies on the floor. Because their collision boxes are still active, I would have gotten, I would have gotten trapped and that other zombie would have bit me for sure, so I'm gonna try this one more time. One, two, go. Okay, there we go. So, plastic bomb, blah, 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 detonator, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna grab this green herb here to kind of Offset the bite and the swipe I took, that should put me back up to 200 health. So we back up a little bit, go right. I think there's enough space for me to do it. Yes, okay, good. Sometimes Marvin will shamble really quickly, and if he does, then you have to dodge long in order to get around him. But uh, if done correctly, then you should just be hugging the couch the whole time. Leon A syndrome, you'll have to excuse me, I almost went the wrong way. 
I've been practicing like all of the scenarios, so that means I've been practicing a lot of Leon. Generally, like generally the hard key is on Marvin's desk whenever you play as Leon. So sometimes I get uh, sometimes I get turned around a little bit, and I try to like go directly to the basement. But then I realize I'm playing as Claire, and then I have to go upstairs and blow up the helicopter in order to get the heart key. So, um, there's not a whole lot going on over here for like the next two minutes, so if you want to like read some donations, it's cool. Alright. I've received a $50 donation from Widley Scuds. It says, great work with the stream, guys. Keep it up. I will donate another 100 bucks if you take the pirate sheep to the top of Carcinogen's head for the rest of the run, so it has the best seat in the house for the run. All the best with the remaining days. Wait, wait what are we taping to Carcinogen? Wait, what? The pirate sheep. The alpaca. Right there. Oh, um, it's an alpaca. <laughs> it's not. It's not a pirate ship. It's an alpaca. I'm not. I'm not sure the mic is gonna reach, but I, I'll. I'll try. So a fifty dollar donation from Petulant. Great work, everyone. This is Petulant. I had a clever donation okay comment okay prepared, us? but I'm afraid it's been canceled. I'm okay with it. Good luck. Okay. Have fun. Thanks. Thank you, Petulant. I don't have any tape. I'll just hold them here for a while. <laughs> Are we really going to do this? I mean, only for, only for a few minutes. It's for charity. Okay. I would feel I would feel a lot better if like if like someone strapped into my head with like a belt or something, because like I, because I feel like I feel like tape would be would be kind of a would be kind of a problem oh, to get I, off. I don't have any tape. I figured I'd just hold them for a while. Okay. Okay. All right, that helps. We, thanks, we, thanks, Viva. No problem. I feel, I feel like oh, that wouldn't oops. be much better than tape. So we have another $50 donation from Deku King Guy. Here's hoping we can get a repeat of your little dance for everyone to see, Carsey. <laughs> what is... What is... What is going on? I can't see. The camera is nothing but the alpaca. The camera is nothing but alpaca. <laughs> Well, so uh, My arms so we're now. playing uh, we're playing Resident Evil 2, Claire A, Alpaca percent. Thanks, man. Oh wow, <laughs> we uh, got a bit of a co-op run. That's cool. My arm got tired. He's on uh, Alpaca duty for now. Yeah. Alpaca duty, nice. All right. So, we got the heart key, and we are going into the basement now. Is something on Carsey's head. Something, Halfway. something is yanking on. Something's yanking on the mic. Oh. Yeah, I think yeah. I think I think there's. I think there's a mic strapped to the alpaca. Yeah, there and is. There is. The, the, the alpaca there, has a mic. And the cable is in turn. Is we, in turn we wouldn't, like we wouldn't the cable want him not to have a mic. Can, can alpaca take a seat now, please? Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> cool. You haven't speed ran until you've so, got an alpaca um, on your head. Do a hard left past these dogs. Uh, al alpaca, alpaca, what are you doing? Uh, alpaca. Uh, you know, I never, I never actually counted. But you can tell that there's a reason I stream this game, and I, 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 I only play this game on stream. <laughs> Yeah, they're all they're all load zones. They can be uh, skipped in the PC version, but <laughs> what the? Uh, I will eat your son. <laughs> your foot's on the mic. Yeah, what is with this huge brick sitting on the ground, like connected to the mic? It's like it's like this big this big XLR cable. Can we like put it on my lap or something? Because it's kind of yanking on my ear. Okay, there we go. <laughs> all right. Alpaca intensifies. 
All right, cool. So uh, yeah, now we're playing as uh, now we're playing as Sherry. Sherry has uh, I don't know how much health Sherry has, but she runs about as quick as uh, Claire or Leon do in Caution. Her turning speed is uh, a little bit faster than Caution, uh, but you know, no no weapons. I wish I could, I wish I wish she had like a submachine gun or something. You know, that would be that would be pretty cool. I feel like a little plays girl a little, with an SMG would be odd. Yeah, plays a little twelve-year-old girl with a submachine gun. Do you think push this to the right. An incentive for me to suplex the alpaca again. And uh, we'll push this down because oh, pushing and Do getting out of that little corner there is a is little bit faster than climbing. Wait, and I'm also, Sherry now. runs the risk of dropping her legs sometimes, which she hasn't yet, I don't think. Yeah, the, the, the leg drop is total RNG. Like, sometimes she just, like, drops her leg. So, uh, yeah. I realize the schedule said uh, either Carcinogen or Fierce Kyo. Um, unfortunately, Fierce Kyo couldn't make it but if we would have uh, we would have split up the scenarios for the bid wars, and it's like whoever wasn't uh, whoever wasn't running would have been commentating on the couch, and I would have given him this scenario for sure. Like Fierce is amazing at Claire A in ways that I cannot even begin to comprehend. So shout out to Fierce Go. Hashtag Fear Fierce Go. <laughs> okay. So we'll uh, grab the club key. And uh, let me see chat. Yeah, hard right. These dogs are like getting like getting past that second dog is kind of RNG, but you will generally maybe ninety percent of the time get out without taking damage. I also messed that dodge up a little bit, but it's cool. It's cool. Need to use the club key at every door so that we can discard it from the inventory instead of having to put it in the box. Putting it in the box would mean another five minutes added and it would also mean a lot of very risky dodging to get to an item box, so let's not do that. Um, Claire has to deal with a few extra liquors than Leon in the A scenario. This is a fun dodge. This is probably like the hardest part of the game, I think. Not the not this dodge, but like this whole area. Crap. Yeah, if those other zombies caught up to me and started fighting me, you would have seen exactly what I meant by how precise you need to be when dodging because like if you because if you mess up if you mess up one dodge then it could mean game over jeez okay this is this is this is looking to be a pretty bad red hallway but i have to have to grin and bear it okay good good just one bite that's fine so here's one of the uh here's one of the problem lickers here uh the uh Pretty much the best way to get to the furnace over here is to just run directly in front of him and try to get him to jump. He's gonna jump again. You can see when he's on his hind legs like that, if you're like running, then it'll prompt him to jump. Um, Liquors also operate on sound, like based on the player's movement. Not really sound per se, but it's all about whether the player is holding the run button at all. So um, with uh, a little bit of trickery, you can actually get the liquor to jump, and uh, you actually do want the liquor to jump, even though a jump will cause 110 damage, which is really bad. The active damage frames are what? The active damage frames actually don't start until maybe the point the liquor is at like the apex of its jump. So you can actually uh, you can actually run around it pretty easily. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, Rest in peace, headphone users. <laughs> so we're gonna go hard right, hard left, hard right again. 
and behind this guy, who just barely misses me, and we're good. Whoa, check out the sweet shades on that alpaca, I just now, I just now saw that. Oh, uh, we've been having fun with it. Yeah, I bet. Um... Alright, so how am I doing? Okay, I just have to use... I just have to use these green herbs whenever I go to use the crank and the cog. So this liquor is another example of what I mean by holding up left or turning before moving. Uh, but in this case, you actually want to hold up left on him, because if you turn before moving, then he will swipe at you immediately if you try to do it that way. So you just want to kind of like collide with him for a second and then move. This cutscene here, zombies come in through uh, broken windows on the first floor. This uh, does affect scenario B a little bit. So for running scenario B, you actually want to place the cable in an A scenario save file in advance. Okay, so here's another one. Yes, got it. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm talking about. How like the liquor's damage frames like they're like they like they start really 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 late. So you can get away with a pretty tricky dodge there. You just have to mash square a whole bunch while you're running towards it and try to make sure he's like standing on his hind legs. As long as he's standing on his hind legs, and you mash square then it is likely to happen where he leaps at you. So there's our other blue stone. So, uh, yeah. Coming back around, we have to hold up and left instead of turning and moving because we want him to kind of turn towards us like that. And that gives us enough of an opening to just run directly to the door. No Fs given. Break down here. That, that was, that was right on cue. I love that. There was a someone's uh, someone's uh, ringtone went off. I think it was like the Chrono Trigger, like when you try to examine the sealed the sealed boxes. You know, do 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 do. Just like pretty much as soon as I broke down that hole. So we're gonna try to do the same thing with the with the slicker here that we did on the third floor. Start matching. Oh, never mind. Okay, we're in caution. So. Yeah, I kind of wasted a few seconds, but whatever. I had. I had that greener back up, or that mixture back up. For marathon routes, I always try to route in at least one extra health pickup. Yep, because if I get caught in caution while I'm trying to, while I'm trying to like run around zombies, then that increases my chances of a game over, and I do not want that. Oh, sorry. Um, I would try to dodge as many zombies as I could, and you know, like it, like. You can use you can actually get away with using first aid sprays as well. Uh and it won't affect your rank. Oh, I thought the cutscene was about to happen, but I didn't mash X enough. One of the biggest things with Resident Evil classic Resident Evil runs is just avoiding getting grabbed so you can stay at higher health to be able to move faster and avoid getting grabbed, which kind of plays into each other, so Yeah. Grabbing begets damage, which begets more grabbing. Which begets more stranger danger. Don't talk to strangers, kids. 
All right. So here's the first boss coming up. <laughs> so you I kind of want to let this cutscene play. Not bad, girl. Because it's like kind of its own. It's like a, kind of a tribute to Alien in its own way. Then you must know about the G-Virus. What is it? Tell me! So, the Chief of Police right. is, uh, yeah, is, uh, kind of a psychopath. Uh, he takes bribes from Umbrella and is trying to just obfuscate all manners of investigation into Umbrella's affairs. And, uh, when it gets to the when it gets to the point that you know the T virus is like all over is like everywhere there's zombies everywhere and there's and he realizes there's like there's like no there's like no more consequences of like you know of like anyone like he won't get like he won't get punished for anything like he just decides to start killing people like he kills the mayor's daughter and he's trying to and he's gonna like he's going to like stuff her taxidermize her but uh. Prior to this, he gets uh, he gets a G embryo shoved down his throat. Shoutouts to Alien. Shoutouts to Alien. But I kind of like his death in the B scenario better. Like I kind of wish Claire B had won. Now that I think about it, because uh, he gets torn in half and his corpse and his corpse just like rockets out of that hole right there. It's amazing to watch. It's like it's like it's like typical Japanese gore flick style. It's it's amazing. I love it. Oh, I almost forgot to equip the grenade launcher. That would have messed up the fight. Um, so, as long as you uh, hold R1 and X and just shake off any of these guys. Unfortunately, I got I got tagged by him, but it's cool. These guys actually cause like very little damage. But it takes uh, five acid grenades or six to seven magnum shots to take down the first boss, the G embryo. So we're coming up to a bit of a really boring part of the run. Speaking a little more about zombies, um, zombies have some pretty interesting quirks with their collision boxes. Um, the shove mechanics, for instance, like if you get grabbed by a zombie, then you can shove the zombie after getting bit like once. I mean, like if you if you like the faster you mash, the fewer times you get bit, but you're always going to take one bite. In Resident Evil 2, at least, it changes depending on the game. Resident Evil Code Veronica, you can just like totally shake off zombies without taking a bite at all, but it's still really annoying to get grabbed, and you have to be really, really, really fast. Um, Resident Evil 3, it only happens like when you get chained. Like so, if you get if you get uh, grabbed by one zombie and you get bitten, and then you get grabbed by another zombie immediately after, then Jill will just like shove the other zombie off immediately. It's uh, kind of a measure to. It's kind of a measure they put in place to keep players from getting stun locked. Um, but the uh, shove mechanics, if you if you shove a zombie and its collision box meets with another zombie or two, up to two other zombies, then those other two zombies will get shoved. But those other two zombies that got shoved will not shove any more zombies. So the shove effect only stacks once. And also their collision boxes are all active until they are until their HP is at zero and they are no longer moving and like there's a pool of blood going around them so it's like when those conditions are met then you can actually walk over zombies otherwise you know they'll if you kill a zombie and it's or like you shoot a zombie down and it's like right in front of you then you won't you know you won't be able to you won't be able to dodge around other zombies quite as efficiently so you have to be pretty careful with your shoves. Um, so there's really nothing going on here in the sewers. Uh, you can go ahead and read more donations if you'd like. See if the alpaca ends up on your head anymore. So what? See if the alpaca ends up on your head anymore. We good. All right. Oh crap! 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 
Received a $120 donation from Whitley Scuds. Happy Pirate Sheep is happy. Extra 10 for the people on alpaca duties. Keep up the excellent work, guys. Thank you very much, Whitley. Uh, move your mic away from your mouth just a little bit. Uh, where? So your mic's like popping when you talk. Say what? Your mic's, your, you said your mic's like popping when you talk. That should oh, be is. good. Okay. 50 bucks from Matt Rassler. 50 bucks for carcinogen SDA slash alpaca participation. Great camera work. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. $35 from Platypus Socks. Wasn't gonna donate again today, but I had to after that amazing alpaca percent run. Keep it up, guys. <laughs> Go ask at Tech if we can start a donation incentive for me to body slam the alpaca. Nice. See you twenty dollars from Larathin. Carsey, be careful of the danger <laughs> zone. Hashtag Kenny Loggins. Is Rob's in here? Put this or? towards runner's choice. Uh put it towards I am the win. And uh do I care for the danger zone? Well, any other time, you know, I would say, I would say, I would say yes. I, 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 I am, I am definitely, you know, not adverse to some uh, Kenny Loggins action. But uh, right about now, you know, we kind of, we kind of don't want Danger Zone. I would actually Lana? kind of appreciate it if, you know, if I, if I, if I don't get into danger during this run <laughs> at all. Because if I got into danger and you know, no help levels, then it's over. Somewhere dark and deep in the archives of the Resident Evil wiki, there is actually a Dr. Loggins that practiced at Resident at Raccoon Hospital. There is a Dr. Loggins? There is. There is he, a Dr. Loggins? I have never found where he's mentioned, but somewhere in Resident Evil wiki, I've fa I have found a Dr. Loggins from Raccoon Hospital. Amazing. <laughs> and he's out. Received a $35 donation from Empty Sobug. Alpacas rule everything around me. Okay, so we're, there's a boss fight here. Um, you know, there's really not much to, uh, really not much to say. There's just a giant alligator. We're just gonna drop this canister and uh, immediately begin roller skating around it. <laughs> Actually, that's uh, Larith and the guy who just donated. That's his, uh, that's his signature move is to roller skate around the, uh, Roller skate around the gas canister there. <laughs> just before the just before the alligator gobbles it up, and you know it's 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 a it's it's a one hit kill no matter no matter what. Shoutouts to Jaws. Shoutouts to Jaws. Smile, you. I'm not sure I can actually say that. Son of a female alpaca. All right. So we've, uh, so we're back to, we're back to having Sherry tag along. Uh, if Claire runs way too far ahead of Sherry, then Sherry will just crouch down to the ground and wait for Claire to come pick her back up. It's uh, kind of a dumb mechanic. Usually what I like to do is I just like to leave her there. You mean like? So I just like, I'll just leave her there and then pick up the, uh, pick up the Eagle Metal. And uh, pick her back up. I have to walk a little bit. There we go. That's good. It's perfect. Way perfect. Oh. I forgot the menu opens right back up after that cutscene. So we just uh, stop the fan. We can go through here. Uh, this is a little weird here. Like, you could run completely straight, then Sherry will just veer off to the side, and if you keep running, then she'll just she'll just crouch down, and you have to run back and pick her back up. So you kind of have to stop like a few steps towards the, uh, towards the ladder. Oh. Almost did the Leon A thing again. That would have been very, very bad, because Sherry would have been very, very far behind. Um, generally what I like to do is I like to walk until Sherry is on, until Sherry is on camera. That's uh, usually a guaranteed way to keep her from uh, crouching down. 
otherwise ruining or making the run a lot harder. Sometimes Sherry can get poisoned by the spiders. Um, she can't really get hit by much. It's the same thing with Ada when Ada is taking one in one scenario. Like sometimes she'll get sometimes she'll get poisoned, dropped on her by a spider, and she'll be poisoned like for the rest of the game. And there's like nothing you can do about it, but it doesn't really matter. But I can see it being a little bit of a problem because Sherry's turning speed does uh, go down the uh, the lower the health she has, and poison poison movement replicates caution movement. So that actually could affect her tagging along, and that would actually be kind of bad. Turn on this tram, and there is exactly what I am talking about. It's only like. It was only like a two second loss there, but no big deal. We're going to completely avoid the weapon box key. We don't need it. We equipped uh, flame rounds beforehand. This camera angle here, pop this on me because there's no other way to get around it, its collision box would still be active, Sherry would have trouble pushing around it, so just just blow it up, just blow it up. These zombies on the other hand though, will just vomit at Sherry, and you can actually dodge around them, like no problem, like so, and so will Sherry, and the zombies will just vomit. So that actually does kind of help, because the active damage frames on vomiting are not that great. Yeah, zombies. Zombies don't like little girls. They have cooties, so that's why that's why they puke up on little girls. Uh, we'll grab the first aid spray here. Um, you can use up to two first aid sprays, or you can save up to six times and not use any first aid sprays before your rank starts to drop. Um, Resident Evil 2's ranking system, like Resident Evil 3, operates on a point system. Like it, uh, like it starts at 300 points, and then it just penalizes you the more things you use. So you can still get, uh, you can still get a rank, or you can still get like 270 points, which you need 270 or 300 to make an A rank by uh, using two first aid sprays or saving six times. It's a little bit of a itch in my eye. Excuse me. And uh, packed up a lot of flame rounds. This next boss here is going to drop after eight flame rounds. Really, really, really fast. And he takes stun. He takes stun lock on every single shot. Like Claire is very, very OP for this fight. But unfortunately, it's the only fight where she actually is OP. Because, like, pretty much all of Claire's weapons are projectiles, like all Leon's guns are on its hand. So, you can see, it's done, it's done, it's done, except it's done. Nothing's going to happen. When he's transforming, he can't take any damage, and he just, like, regenerates a little bit of health. So you have to, you have to wait until his uh, transforming animation is done, and then you can just hold R1 and just blast him one more time and he's dead. And that was Birkin? That was, uh, yeah, that was G2, Birkin G2. Um, in the A scenarios, you fight Birkin G2, G3, and G4, and the G embryo, which some people, for some reason, like to call G0, I guess. Um, we're going to try and... Uh, excuse me, we're going to try and power through this with... Just these, uh, just a couple more first aid sprays. The laboratory has only one area that is really, really dangerous, and that is the liquor hallway on floor B4. Oh yeah, also any form that you do not fight in the A scenarios of Birkins will be fought in the B scenarios instead. If you kill the alligator in the A scenario by uh, blowing up its head, 
with a canister like I did, then he won't appear in scenario B. But uh, if you just if you just straight up shoot him or knife him or whatever, yes, the alligator actually can be knifed. It's really, really, really difficult to do though. Um, then it'll appear in scenario B, and you'll have to blow off its head with the canister, or just kill it, you know. But uh, on top of that, B scenario also has uh, also has encounters with the uh, trench coat tyrants, which are uh, kind of uh, the next level of the uh, tyrants from the first game. Like they're just uh, they're just like seekers. They're programmed to go after a certain target or like a chemical substance or whatever. In this case, the tyrant that you encounter in the B scenario is sent to pursue the G virus, and the character you play in the B scenario just encounters that. Um, we can just hug in between that plant and the wall there and just squeeze right there. Just go directly to the door. It's a lot easier than it looks. And this is. Uh, one of the most worrisome rooms in the run. We have taken to calling it the uh, Stumbling Room because when liquors, when there's three liquors like this and they surround you, then you run a very high risk of getting stun locked, or as the case may be, stun licked. Fortunately, like passing through, you know, it only took like maybe one or two swipes. Each swipe causes 30 damage, but uh, going back is kind of, kind of a pain. Just learned some strats a little while ago to make it run a little more smoothly. Hard left here. Going to the P4 laboratory. Right. Hard left, hard right. And uh, sometimes the zombie may shamble really quickly. But if he doesn't, then you can just like turn to place and run before he comes to you. But if, he's, if he shambles too fast, then you will not be able to turn and run. And you kind of have to do like a rather large circle around him to get out of the room. And that wastes about, that wastes about five seconds. Actually, no, not five seconds. Actually, more like, maybe more like two or three, I think. I generally don't use split timers to gauge how much time I lose in my runs. I just look at a mistake and I realize, wow, it's 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 either it's either bad or it's really bad. And if it's really bad, then you know there's there's a chance that I might not be able to continue. Okay, so I'm gonna try and get these lookers to jump. Um, Generally, you have to start mashing square like the sec like the first time you hear it start clicking, like this, like that. See, I kind of got slushed there. That was that was good. That was good. But uh, yeah, generally, the more the more you mash square, the more likely the liquor is going to try and uh, get on its hind legs try to detect where you are. And when that happens, like you're still going to be mashing square, and it'll try to leap at you. I can't tell whether it's like a, whether it's like a distance thing or whether it's whether it's just something you trigger by sound or something, but whatever, it works. The liquor jumps. It's very very difficult to understand the enemy AI routines sometimes. So this next room here, the Modus room and the uh, vaccine room. Gonna need to play it a little bit safe and just blow them all up. There are ways to do this room without using without firing a single bullet, which is pretty nice, but when you take into consideration how many of them there are and how clumped together they are and whether they're going to shamble slowly, shamble quickly, you know, I don't want to take that risk right now. I thought there was a cutscene there for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. Shoot that. Shoot him. We'll shoot the other one in the distance. And we got him. Off camera. 
Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Just another dead zombie. One of the more interesting things of Resident Evil runs is that zombies shamble quickly or, f quickly or slowly, and there's no real way to manipulate it, so you have to be able to adapt to either one. It actually makes it a very interesting run. Yeah, pretty much. Especially this tough one. Yo, what is that? Is it zombies? Is it zombies? What? There may be a zombie apocalypse happening at SGDQ. Probably. I don't know, someone's banging on the door like really loud out there, trying to get in. It stay away like, from, it stay away like from windows. I think it might be zombies. Good. Did you bring your rocket launcher? No. Did you? I thought you were going to. No, I, I, I left it. I left it back home. TSA TSA wouldn't let me check it through. Are you kidding? Really? Of course you're they didn't. You're supposed to check it in your bag. I mean, it's 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 already it's already bad enough that I have that I have a game console with carcinogen on the label, and they and they stopped me. They stopped me last time I had that. It was like whatever. TSA. Shoutouts to TSA. You have it. Whoa. Alpaca, please. He didn't have the grenade launcher. Are we? I don't think. I don't think it's going to work. Just like, just like launch alpacas. I'm probably gonna get yelled at a lot for that. <laughs> I think. I think so. Yeah. You were. You were going to face retribution. I see? The owner of that alpaca. Oh, she's oh, not going to get shot up. Oh. I mean, I got a high five. Hopefully, his mic wasn't on. So, grab this other FAS here, and that's going to be our uh, that's going to be our backup plan in case something really, really bad happens. Which, uh, fortunately, it has not yet. But uh, actually, I do need to use an FAS here for the boss because it's actually a good thing that I remembered because if uh, because the boss can sometimes combo you, um, like Birkin's dog form can sometimes combo you, where he just like jumps up, jumps down, you get hit twice, and then there's like a third there's like a third attack that triggers while you are in while you're in hit stun animation, and that causes like 110 damage, so your health can drop by a lot, like at least. At least 140 health, so you need to be prepared for that. I'm sorry, Alpaca. So it's always it's always good to be at 200 health before you go against the final boss in the A scenario, especially since the final boss in the A scenario, if you if you mess something up, like if your if like if your positioning is a little bit off and your timing is a little bit off, then he will then he will just go he will just go. Ape poo. I don't think I can say that word on camera. I can say poo, but I can't say the other word. Ape. Did anyone see what chat had to say about the alpaca? <laughs> okay. So here's the uh, here's the final boss. Um. Gotta go around this corner here. Aim up. Two, three. Shit. Excuse me. I get one. I get one. <laughs> Thank you. But, I don't um, think I should say that word on stream. But where is he? Where is he? Come on. Oh please, keep keep looping, keep looping. I like you. I like this. No. Oh crap, here he comes, here he comes. Where is he? I have to shoot him when he comes around the corner, right there. Okay, good. I was at just enough health. That's like 110 damage right there. I'm probably in danger now. No. Okay. Two more hits. Yep. There we go. So it takes uh, it takes 12 grenades total to take down Birkin three and four. But uh, we were really, really, really lucky. We. 
did not get caught by his combo there because if I got caught by his combo, like where he jumps up, jumps down, then does that chomp attack where he spits me back out, that would have been the end of the run. So, time. 57.29. So what? Okay, great. So we're at 57. Good. So I think uh, I think that's going to come out like uh, a 110, 111 in game time. Um, we took a, we took we took a we took a little bit longer. Like it would have been slower, it would have been faster real time if I'd skipped that cutscene with Chief Irons. So I think we might actually be around the uh, around the one the 110 mark ish. So uh, anyways, yeah. What's the world record? Uh, the world record is 108.07. I think it's 108.07 by Fierce Co. Yeah. And uh, my own personal best is about 109 something for the GameCube version. Uh, I haven't actually practiced Clary as much as uh, Fierce Co. has. But, uh, yeah. It's really unfortunate that. I apologize for the Alpac incident. And, and Viva apologizes for the Alpac incident. I'm sorry. So, uh. Ah, my God has protected you. Let's see. It will always oh, be great. with you. Um. Claire. Sherry. Shout outs to everyone at biohazardspeedruns.com. Uh, you guys are an awesome group of people. Just like. Everyone pretty much piggybacking off of each other, beating each other's runs, and uh, helping each other learn th learn new ch learn new tech. It's amazing. Here's uh, Kira, Larithan, uh, D Chaps, Jake Tabor, Elaval, Chu, uh, a few others. Probably not even. I don't know. So uh, I guess we'll the uh, I guess we'll be wait for the uh, credits to roll in the final time. Uh, I guess we could read some more donations, like, because, like, Tofu is coming up next, so we just, like, use this interim period. I mean, while... Wait, that's my mic. Oh, he's not, he doesn't have a mic anymore. <laughs> wait, you're not on camera anymore. You can put it, you put it on your head. All right, we've received a $100 we waiting, donation but... for, uh... Also, shout-outs to the Collective Clinch. Love you guys. Received a $100 donation from Bryson Monma. <laughs> What was that? Glad I caught this year's GDQ. I hope yeah, so. Yeah, Tofu Games coming up next. Yeah, I got map. <laughs> Glad I caught this year's GDQ. I love all the runs and I love knowing it all goes to great cause. Glad to see Carcinogen here. Nice. I hope he can twerk it out. Oh. We got a $35 donation from Popmaster155. It says, Hey, Car Seat Popmaster155 here. I waited all marathon to donate to you and hope you get the 3-1 three, three hype and the strangers don't put you in danger. $35 from Stephen Noren. Thank you for putting on these events. It gives me something fun to watch while I study. And best of all, it all goes for an amazing cause. Good luck to all the runners and keep being awesome. Received a $10 donation from Novice. He's putting your donations in perspective. He says an Ebola epidemic is going on right now in West Africa, causing hemorrhagic fever, which has thus far caused 350 deaths. Doctors Without Borders is one of the main organizations contributing to health care for these people. These events do a great job of generating a lot of money for people who really need it. Thanks, guys, and keep up the good work. So, yeah, 110.37. It's pretty okay for uh, yep. since he brought it. 
So. Dude, I wanted the Cynics in here. Okay, so. Uh, so the. Uh, is that what I think it is? That's totally what I think it is. Is that Frank or Z? Yeah. Do we do we want do we want him on couch with the alpaca? Hey, let's put this on camera for a second. Here, I'll hold it with the alpaca. Yeah, yeah, hold it, hold it for the, hold it next to the alpaca for like. Where where is the camera looking? Yeah, the camera is like right there. No, I know I see the camera, but I wasn't sure where it was looking. I was yeah, going. It's like, it's like right about. I was. Well, I'm going for. Uh, I'm just looking over there to see the preview. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> That exploded right. with Frank so, uh, Here's the uh, Tofu Man mini game. Uh, gonna need a little bit of uh, gonna need a little bit of quiet for this because uh, I've yeah, been like I've been practicing it. I have it done pretty consistently, but all right. Literally broke Jack. Yep. Do we want to get a timer for this? Uh, yeah, can we vanish? Sorry? Yeah, let's time it. All right. Three, two, one, go. So uh, the Tofu Survivor. Guys. Guys. So the Tofu Survivor is like uh, is a, is pretty much a parody of like the Fourth Survivor mini game. You play as uh, you play as Tofu, who is a character that uh, it's it's believed that Tofu was put in the game to test the hitboxes, but uh, he's an unlockable character if you beat player if you beat. Uh, if you beat the game six times in a row, get like an A rank in all of them. Uh, yeah, but these dodges are really, really hard to do because Tofu is only armed with a knife. Normally I'd like to play as Hunk for this, but, you know, because this is a donation incentive, we're gonna, we're gonna, the we're just gonna do Tofu knife. instead. So hard right, hard left, behind this guy, almost got bit. Normally, I play as Hunk, a special ops agent, to come in and receive a tr and retrieve a sample of the G virus. Spiders. Okay, that's good. That's good. Is able to stay on the inside? Okay. And instead of being a special operations soldier, you are a large block of bean curd. Yes. A rather large block of bean curd who uh, he uh, gets redder as he takes more damage, and he wears in a sock and dial every time he gets hit. So, hard right, hard left. Didn't get caught on the corner. That's good, that's good, that's good. Okay. This is a really clean yeah, one. Yeah, we've, so we've cleared, we've cleared like several rooms without taking damage. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm usually pretty good about not taking damage during the first half of the Tofu Survivor. But uh, it's the second half that really, that really, you know, puts your, puts your skills to the test. Like, Tofu is, uh, Tofu is pretty good. He's still got, uh, but he's got, but he's only got like 400 HP. Like he's got 400 HP compared to the 200 HP the other characters have. Oh crap! Okay, this this may have messed it up. Okay, yep, 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 yep. I got pecked. I got pecked. He's a walking hunk of bean curd with a heart full of meat, as evidenced by all the gore. It's like left. Yes, yes. Okay, good, 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 Very good. Very nice. Good. One other so amazing... the world record for this is uh, 159 and some change by a Brazilian player named Smallville CS. Or at least that is for Hunk. Uh, for Tofu, the uh, fastest time is also 159 and some change by a Japanese player named Jika Chan on PS1. So, move left, forward. Tofu likes to spurt bits of Japanese when he gets grabbed. Yeah. So that was like that was like that was like sixty damage, so I'm up down to three forty I think. Okay. So we're still we're still doing pretty good. I can't believe I messed up that dodge though. That was that was like that was supposed to be really easy. So this uh, this next area here there's three liquors. And I like to take this area really, really, really carefully. Because I'm not sure how to manipulate these guys yet. I have to wait for this guy to get off of his hind legs so that I can resume walking. As I mentioned earlier, liquors are uh, totally triggered by sound. And when this liquor drops, I break into a run. And I can get around these guys before they even start moving. Because they're still stuck in their dropping animation. 
So these plants here are where you are going to take the most damage in the fourth survivor river spit. And not yet it! Okay. <laughs> oh, I almost got poisoned. Not yet it! Not yet it! Okay, that's nice. I think I took a little bit of damage there, but that's okay. Alright, so this one is this 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 other one is also really difficult. Uh I have to wait for the one on the right to spit. Move forward. Not yet in. Okay, this is bad. This is real bad. Okay, we're good. Um I'm going to try a trick that I learned while practicing this and practicing Leon B. Uh, I'm gonna try and get the tyrant to do a cargo punch, hopefully it works. Yep. So uh, if he hits, if he hits you with a clothesline, that's the team one of threes that I was talking about from the that appear in the B scenarios. If he hits you with a clothesline, he will always follow up with a hammer blow. So when he's doing the hammer blow, you can run around him, but otherwise you'll just be tanking damage. So we're at the uh, zombie minefield here, and wow, this is glorious. I should probably heal. Each green herb heals uh, 50 damage. Uh, combining the two does nothing, but combining three refills your health to full. Which I'm not sure of it, which I'm not quite sure if it's the same in Tofu's case. Okay, I'm gonna try and get the other one to leap. He doesn't leap. Whatever, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay. Go through these double doors and we're gonna deal with more plants. And I still have my core, so if I get poisoned here, it's not a big deal. Like this is, you know, as it, as long as I as long as I don't get poisoned here and not have a blue herb, then we'll be able to do the last two rooms without much difficulty. Not yet, Ed. Okay, come on. More damage. That's that's good. He also sweats more and he gets redder and redder the more he gets hit. Not yet, Ed. Okay. Okay, so this next one really, really, really difficult. Serious time. Yes! Okay. What? You did. Okay, come on. Go, go, go. Yeah, so that's uh, collision boxes in action. You know, shove one zombie, then the two other zombies that connect with the first one's collision box get shoved over. And uh, I still have enough health to tank the last hit of this time right here. And is this going to be a new PB? Five, nine, eight, eight, seven, eight. Oh, oh, one second off. One second off. So close. So close. But yeah, that's it. Time. Hey, time. So that's that's the tofu survivor. The one room we also clapped after has eight zombies? Yeah, has eight, eight zombies. Which is about as much as the game can handle and is extremely precise to get through. Yeah. I've it's tried like, it a few times this yeah. hunk, I've yet to do it. Yeah, but like the but like the dodge in that one in that other room where I like started knocking over the zombies, there was like there was like no other way to pass. There's a, there's no other way to pass it without like Alright, who, so who wants Franker Z? Franker Z. Who wants Franker Z? Enjoy System Shock 2. It is System Shock 2, right? Or is it? Dude, that was so close to a new PB. Wait, I'll, leave, I'll leave the announcing to the announcers. All right, thanks, Carcinogen, for an excellent Resident Evil 2 speed run. Next up, we have System Shock 2. That's being run by Cherno. And we'll follow that up with Psychonauts, which will be brought to us by Duke Bilgewater.